Hello, thank you so much for viewing my video. This is Dr. Tuesday. I do hope you are having a great day. I wanted to share with you a text that I came across as I was studying uh, the word. I think I was doing a study on following those who are deceptive or what deception means and just different scriptures about deception. And I ran across Psalms 52, and I want to read this into your ear, hearing and just kind of talk through it as I read it. And keep your heart open, keep your mind open. But this truly, this is a mighty word of God. Psalms 52, it says, Why do you boast, O evil, O mighty man? Not mighty man of God, but just mighty man. That means this is a man of position of statue, of influence, probably wealthy, has money and riches. And so uh, he's mighty in his own strength or where society uh, of that time had put him. He says, why do you boast of evil? Why do you celebrate and boast in things that are just not right? Why, why do you do that? It goes on to say the steadfast love of God endures all the days. Now, that word is to encourage the righteous. So, so be encouraged, those of us who are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. He said the steadfast love of God endures all days. But yet this old, this man, this man, this mighty man boasts of and in evil. You, almighty oh man, your tongue plots destruction. Your tongue plots plots, destruction, the tongue, that's the smallest thing that the Bible says in John, you can't control it. Your tongue plots to bring people, situations, communities, environments, plans down. Destruction. It says your tongue, that tongue of yours is like a sharp razor and you are a worker of deceit. Your tongue is like a sharp razor. You know, razors, they just yield and just wield and go whichever way they want to go. That's like your tongue. You just say whatever you think you should say and think you should be able to say whatever you think you should be able to say. And people applaud you for that. People liked you for that, that you were so different and he's so bold and he's not afraid to say what everybody else has been wanting to say. No, that's not good. Because God tells us to tame this tongue. Your tongue ain't tamed. Your tongue plots destruction, the word of the Lord says. It says that it's like a razor. It's meant to cut. The things that you say, you've meant to say them about women. You've meant to say them about blacks. You've meant to say them about Mexicans. You've meant to say that about thugs. You've meant to say it. There's not an oops. And the truth is, we know it's not an oops because you've never come back and apologized for anything. When you said you didn't know who Jesus Christ was as Lord and Savior and what that meant, you meant that. So the curt, coarse, mean-spirited, disrespectful words you said, you meant them. You meant them. Mm -hmm. He meant them, people. He meant them. It says, you love evil. This is a scripture, Psalms 52. You love evil more than good. You love lying, lying more than speaking the truth and what is right. Your opinion is not truth. What you think is not truth. What is truth is what is truth. It does not change. But you love speaking the truth. You love not saying what is right. You love all your words that devour. Your words devour. Devouring people's credibilities, people's character, people's self-esteem. You, you love that. It's funny to you. We've seen you laugh about these things. We've seen, we've seen this old man, this old mighty man. We've seen him talk about handicapped people, black people, six boys accused of raping someone, find out that they're not guilty. But he says they should get the electric chair. This is the man that 
People say he's not a racist. Well, he certainly has made racist comments. And he's definitely a bigot. And he's definitely a classist. And he's definitely a sexist. Oh, we could put some stuff on it. So this is scripture. Verse 5 says, but God, but somebody say, but God. God will break you down, oh mighty man. And he will break you down forever. Because God is all powerful. God is all strength. God is all might. God is all wisdom. God is the most wealthiest man in the world, in the universe. He will break you down and he will snatch you and tear you from your tent, from your dwelling, from your high place, from your tower, from the place that you find refuge. After you said all these wicked and coarse and mean spirited things that you run back to in your ivory place, your tent your marble floors, your gold countertops. You, you run back there. The Bible says God will break you down forever and will snatch you from those tents. He will uproot you from the land of the living. It says, but the righteous, the righteous will see this and they will fear because the righteous will know that it's God who's done this and God has the power to do this. And that means that if God did this, he gave you time to get it right. He gave you time to do the right thing. But the righteous will fear because the righteous would have been praying for you and believing for you. And so the righteous, the righteous will fear. And they will say, they're going to laugh at you now, the Bible says. They're going to laugh saying, see, see, this mighty man who did not make God his refuge, his safe place, did not put God first, did not put God's word first, God's way of doing things first, because he trusted in his own abundance. He trusted in his own riches. He sought refuge in his own tent and found destruction. He sought refuge in his own power and his own ability, and his own resources. This is the word of the Lord. I want you to be mindful in this election year. We have a man who is documented, deceptive, will not release his taxes, has been deceptive in his business dealings, unfair, in his business dealings, has taken money from people and has not given it back. A man knowingly has lied, committed adultery, has made treason statements. A man who has belittled, talked about, degraded, disrespected women in every race and color in this United States, except maybe Caucasian people. But hear me, if you are white and poor, he don't care nothing about you. Nothing. This is a man who, for whatever reason, decided to run for president. I don't believe he really wanted to be president. I believe the train left the station and it started pulling out and it started going real fast and picking up space and, and picking up pace. And the next thing he knows, people are backing him and he's excited about the polls. And here we go. I can be president. I don't believe he really was really his intent to be president. Maybe that's why he was saying such off the wall, crazy stuff. But just like Hitler, I ain't calling the man Hitler. I'm just saying, just like Hitler, Hitler warned of all of these things. Hitler said these things and they still did not listen to him. So he says all of these things. He is a man who believes in separation. So someone tell me, what does it mean that he's going to make America great again. What part of America is not great? I mean, we know we got issues in America. No country is perfect, but when you compare America to other countries, what what is it that makes us great again? So I guess what I'm saying, what are we going back to that was so great? Are we going back to desegregation? Are we going back to instead of just shooting black men, now you're going to hang them in the public square? What are we going back to that's great? Black bathrooms, white bathrooms, 
and transgender bathrooms. You've got to keep that, right? So what are we going back to that's so great? Someone help me. What was great about the 60s and the 50s and the 40s? Where we certainly know then there was absolute separation, absolutely, you know, just different races and, and women, communities and cultures did not have equal footing. Now, we know today everything still isn't like all equal. We know that everything isn't equal in, in business, in your uh, corporations with women's salaries and men's salaries, black, thin, white. You still have all of these issues. But what America are you trying to make great again? For you, America has never been bad, Mr. Billionaire. So what are you trying to make great for the rest of us? Because nothing you said in that 70 minutes was speaking to any of us. You said some things, but you know no policy. You have no policy. You have no way of telling us how you are going to make America great again. Ask me what, what, it ain't even about making anything great again. Let's just take it to the next level. Why go back that you got to make something great again? What does it look like moving forward? This is the other question I have. We know all of these things about this man. This man who has said all of these horrible things about everybody has made fun of the handicapped people, a veteran, has made fun of someone who stutters, who has pulled and snatched people out of his meetings and, and said to beat them and throw them out. This is a man. This is a man who let big, burly men circle around a little girl, a, a young woman, a, happens to be a black woman, but circle around her, pulling another woman out, Caucasian woman out, who simply had up a sign wasn't saying anything. A man who we have seen provokes hate and anger and, and celebrates it. Who talks about he's going to bring, you know, justice back. And, and, and what does that mean? What does that mean? But doesn't talk about the injustice that has happened to so many young people, young men, young women, African-American men. I question, with all due respect, this is not a Republican Party issue, by the way. This is a issue of a man who happens to be a part of the Republican Party. Because if he was an independent, we would still be saying the same thing. If he was a Democrat, we would still be saying the same thing. Somebody said that he is the least of two evils. Really? Someone tell me what makes Hillary evil. What? She made some wrong decisions in her position, but so did many other people in high positions. You make wrong decisions every day that affect you, your family, your kids, your job. You're a manager. You're a regular line worker at McDonald's, right? Great job. Thank God you got a job, but you made a decision not to make any more hamburgers until the rush hour. Well, lo and behold, you get a bus that comes in. So does that negate that you haven't been a good employee? Because you decided not to drop more fries or make more quarter pounders? You didn't know that bus was going to come in. So do we make bad decisions? Absolutely. In every position. In life, because we're human. I still don't understand what she lied about. Okay. She read, received some emails on her private server. What, at home? Okay. I had a high position, a pretty decent position in corporate America. I got emails on my private, on my... Uh, computer that wasn't, matter of fact, I worked at um, the finance center, the second largest building uh, in the United States Army, in the United States military, I believe, period. And I worked there on their computer systems. And when I was not at work, I worked from home. I got emails. You do too. Did her emails cause a demise to our economy, to any war we were in, any foreign land we were in? No. But there is a question right now about how did Trump, what made Trump mention Russia? And then the FBI or CIA or whoever it was went and started investigating Russia's people about possibly being the culprits behind 
the infiltration of the emails between Sanders or about Bernie Sanders as it related to Hillary. So how did he know about that? Just a question. Y'all need to, y'all need to read. Y'all need to read. Y'all need to Google and start reading the comments he's made, the destructive comments he's made, the behavior he's had. He just told someone the other day, because they asked him a question, be quiet. How, how do you just tell somebody to be quiet or shut up? Who does that? That's like the chick on CNN when our boy um, DL was on there. and He said, um, he breathed. He was like, whoo, just took a deep breath. She talking about, and, he, and uh, she, he, she, she said something and he said, wow. And she said, don't wow me. Really? White girl, please. Yes, I will wow you because I'm a grown man. And I can wow whoever I want to wow. Who are you to tell me? It's this entitlement thing. It's this superiority thing. And the scripture is clear. God's word is clear. God hates that prideful, nasty attitude that thinks you're better than other people. There's nothing wrong with having confidence. I'm a confident woman, but my confidence comes because I know God is in me and he has a great plan for me and his greatness is in me. And that's what makes us great. Not money, not cars, not where you live, not how many buildings you have, not all the things that you think you have that can control other people. Hear me, poor people, white, brown, black, orange, yellow, purple, red. He don't care nothing about you. He's a classist. He cares nothing about you. He wants your vote. So I encourage us to look at what we have before us and truly look at Psalms 52. Look at it in different versions and see how the Lord speaks to you. It's the post I, I put out the other day about this, you know, the six thing God, six things God hates and the seven he despises. All seven of them look like that man who's running for president. This sounds like him too, but it's telling us how God will handle him. So what is our role? Our role is to vote. Our role as Christians, as citizens, is to vote. Pray and vote. There's a scripture that talks about when the disciples, after Judas died, they prayed, the Bible said, they prayed and they sought the Lord on who should replace Judas. And the Bible says that two names came before them, Matthias and Joseph. The Bible says they cast their lots, their individual lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. Casting that lot it's the same thing as us casting our vote, casting our ballot. We do that knowing, as they did, that the decision is up to God. God is in control, but we still have a responsibility to cast our lot, to cast our vote, to cast our ballot in November. And so I pray that everyone hears this message. Send it viral. I don't care if he get it. Dude, you ain't right. You ain't right. You're not right. You're not right. And you don't know Jesus. And anyone who says that they are a follower of Jesus Christ has ever read the word, heard the word, or preached the word and think that you should be the president of the United States to stand over the care of this country for our children and our children's children? No. He shows you that he's not loyal. He's not loyal. So all of you who are following him for whatever promises he may have made or think you're going to get in the door or finally have access to a rich man, I don't care if you are his spiritual advisor. He's not a loyal man. If he don't like it, you're going to be gone. It's like I heard one evangelical say, which I didn't think she was an evangelical, but she showed acting like one, that she was with him in Florida on one of his new golf courses and he stops and pulls over and talks to one of the groundskeepers, a Mexican man, girl, boo. So I pull over and stop talking to people all the time. I minister to people. 
I minister to people pulling over on the road, not on my private golf course from my golf cart. And I hope you have done that too before. So, and thanked him for caring, taking such good care of his property. Did he give him a raise? Did he give him a paid week's vacation? Did he let him have a have a free golf lessons at his golf course? Girl, boo, don't nobody care that he pulled over and talked to the, the man who cares for the property. The least you could do is say thank you. And we ain't talking about no Christmas bonus. If you've ever read the word if you've ever heard the word, if you've ever preached the word. What he communicates and spouses does not line up with the love and the grace of God for all people. It doesn't. And so I encourage us to do your homework. Do your homework. Know what you're talking about know why you're voting, and I believe God that Hillary will be the next pre next president of the United States. Not because she's a woman. I think that's great with history, with her, with an African-American president and now a woman president and this whole thing with the history of husband and wife being president. We have lived to see that. The prophets didn't live to see that. They didn't live to see Jesus go to the cross for us though it was prophesied years ago, we get the privilege of seeing these things. Make the right decision for you, your family, your children, your community, and then vote locally. Vote for the local positions too. Do your research on them as well. But this is a very critical next four to eight years. It is critical. And so when she gets in there, pray for her and cover her. If you let him get in office because you did not vote, you can't say anything when everything falls out that is not in your favor. You will must be required to keep your mouth shut and bite the sour grape that you will be served because you did not follow through on not only your spiritual responsibility as a Christian or whatever your faith is to pray and your civic and social responsibility to vote. And so, like the disciples, cast your vote. Trust God. They had no idea that the lot was going to follow on Matthias, but they did what they were supposed to do. They prayed, they asked God, they voted. And you do it in humility. You do it trusting God because you don't know, but you know that you've done what you were supposed to do. Amen. So I do. I do hope that I see you at the polls. I do pray that this was a blessing. Share with other people. Get the word out there. Do your own research of the things that he has said. The things that he has communicated. Find me one. Find me three solid policies that he's communicated about education, race, women's rights, um, now, you know, this is interesting. Let me say this cause I surely was going to end, but someone said, you know, um, the whole LBGT, I think that's what it's called thing. Now, listen, anybody who knows me knows that I, I have a ministry to those who are in the lifestyle, who are struggling, who are between this battle of, I know God's word says I shouldn't be like this. I, I shouldn't feel this way. I know it's not natural and I love God and I know God loves me, but he hates this sin and I don't know what to do. I'm called to those people. And, and I, I love the one I love. Hey, I love you. Just like I hate my sin and hated my sins when I was in the midst of doing something that I knew was not God's will. And I kept going to God. God had to teach me how to love me and receive his love. And so I give that back to people who are struggling in whatever they're struggling in. But someone said to me, you Tuesday who don't believe in this, how could you vote for Democrats? Hello. And, and back I already confessed it. Back when Bush's last race, this was at the beginning of this. You got to think this was, what, 12 years ago when Massachusetts decided to uh, pass uh, same-sex marriage? This was at the beginning of the cusps, cusp of this. And I know what the Lord told me about when that becomes legal, what was going to happen. 
And I said, I will not be a part of that. So I did not vote for the guy who was running, who was from the governor, governor of Massachusetts. I voted for uh, Bush, second Bush, son Bush. Didn't believe in his policies at all. But on this, I had to make a stand because I knew what the Lord told me about that issue. And so I took a position and I voted. When Obama came in, he was not saying same-sex marriage was legal. That was after he was voted in for his second term. I really don't know what I would have done had he came out with that during before he um, won the second time. But he did. Once he got in there, he, he flipped the script on us. So that's between him and God. But let's not forget. Trump is with same-sex marriage. Trump said they can, he going to create bathrooms throughout all his towers. He talks about LBGT. So what y'all going to do, Republicans? Because that's one of the things you all hail to, that this is not what we stand on. But you got a boy in there who does stand on it. And you're still saying you're going to vote for him when you know he's not the right person just to say that you voted Republican. You have to stand for what's right, particularly if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. If you are a son of daughter of the living God, you must vote according to the character and nature of God. And the things that this dude talks about is not reflective of that. So I pray. I pray, I know it's long, I apologize for that, but I pray that this message has spoken to someone, has prompted a conviction in you. Nobody has to know that you vote, you've been voting Republican for 90 years, and this year you said, I can't do that. The boy, I can't remember his name, the man who, who was at the Democratic Convention, who said, I, I voted Republican all my life, but this year I can't do that. Because he's dangerous. His own people is saying he's dangerous. So definitely, if you are a Democrat, you must vote. You must vote. You don't have to agree with all of Hillary's policies. We all made mistakes. You, me, her. We pray the right people are around her. She's coming in with knowledge, unlike Trump, who's coming in with no knowledge. That's dangerous. You can't surround yourself with everybody who knows more than you. Because you know nothing which means they know everything, which means they can tell you stuff that you don't even know if you should be doing. I challenge the evangelicals, the pastors, the preachers, the teachers, the rich, the wealthy, the poor, the middle class, the white, the black, the yellow, brown, red. I implore you. Pray. Seek God's face and his word. God loves people. In Psalms 52, a deceitful tongue, words that devour, because he would not make God his refuge. He would not run to God for answers and safety. He would not seek the true and living God for understanding, to do the right thing, but he lean to his own understanding and his ways of deception because he believed in his abundance of riches and sought refuge and safety in his own tents, towers, homes, money, status, title. And it was all to his own destruction. So if you're following him, if you're in agreement with him, examine your heart, check your heart. Check your heart, people. Nobody's perfect. We all fall short, right? But check your heart. Why would you align yourself with someone who is not aligned with the love of God, with the heart of God? You wouldn't marry a man, would you? Would you marry a man? Would you marry a woman who talks like this? Would you marry a man who talks like this about women? Would you? Would you mar marry a man who is lying and won't, who's deceptive, who 
puts one hand in front of you and hides one behind his back or hides them both in his pocket, would you really marry a man like that? Would you marry a woman whose tongue is like a razor before you even, you know that, dating her? Would you marry her? She'll be cutting you up all the time. Would you really do that? You're a Christian. Would you marry somebody who's not put their refuge, their hope, their fear, their reverence into God? Really? You would come, would you come into covenant, into agreement to cover you, to come alongside of you, to pray you, pray for you? Would you? Then why would you? Why would you make that type of person your president? I pray that you receive this message. And I pray, I pray that you have a great day. And I pray that I'll see you at the polls. Listen, just a couple of things since we're here. My women's uh, revival and symposium is coming up November 11th and 12th, right around holy time, right? So I hope to see you there. Um, it will be at Progressive Baptist Church, 59th and Georgetown. Uh, Friday evening is open uh, to uh, the public, uh, but anyone who would like to participate in Friday, um, and I may, I'm going to see if I can do like a special reception with the prophetess. So anyone who would like to be a part of Friday, Saturday morning's taping, uh, and then uh, Saturday morning's worship service, workshops, lunch, giveaways, awesome giveaways, then you must register. And it is a minimal fee. It really is for all that you're going to be getting, particularly being a part of a live studio audience for the taping for my show for Channel 40. So if you would like to be a sponsor, we need sponsors for that show, um, for the taping, and would love to uh, have sponsors for the youth uh, portion of that conference. So I look forward uh, to just being with you. Girl Talk is every second Friday of the month. Uh, check out my website. Be a part of that. Uh, I'm kind of vacillating on some of the training things I was going to do. I may still do a training for speakers and a training for trainers. But other than that, my total focus is on uh, the Unite to Ignite Revival and Symposium, November 11th and 12th. It is going to be off the hook. Prophetess Marcia uh, Morrison will be here. Awesome worship, awesome music. It is really going to be a blessing to the city. We are going to ignite our women. We are uniting them and our young girls so we can ignite them for purpose towards destiny. So we can set it ablaze. Amen. Amen. So I look forward. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I know it was long, but I pray you got some good information. All right. Be sure to check out my inspirational insights on uh, WHMB channel 40, uh, Lissy broadcasting, which is also the station that my, uh, television show will be on Tuesdays with Tuesday, a Dr. Tuesday special, which will start in November. Amen. God bless you.